So that's interesting because it means that a pod here, for example, can reach another pod over here using DNS. But one of the problems you'll have is you can't test that with networking tools in the typical sorts of containers. There's no ping, there's no NS lookup, so you're going to need a different tool. In our case, that will be BusyBox. So let's go ahead and create a BusyBox definition. And here is that definition. And then let's go ahead and create the pod. And we can do a watch on that. But you can see that the download was fast enough that it started pretty quickly. Now, we had seen from a previous video that you can do an NS lookup and get kubernetes.default. Now, you might be wondering, well, where did that come from? Well, it turns out that if you do a k or kubectl get service, that you'll see one of them defined as kube-dns, which does mas match this. Then what follows that dot is this entry here, and this is part of the DNS assignment for a service. So what you're seeing is this syntax. You have the name of your service, then a dot, and the namespace in which it was defined. Then you have dot svc to indicate that it was a service, and then dot cluster dot local. And in fact, you can see all of these parts, right? When I do a get service, there's our cube DNS. Then the cube dash system, well, we just mentioned that down here in the namespace, so there's cube dash system. We know it's a service, and then we have cluster dot local. And that means you can ping the cube dash DNS service. But that error message that we're getting back is not because of bad DNS, it's because there's nothing listening on a ping. ICMP is not enabled on kube-dns, so we won't get a ping response. And you can, in fact, test this by also checking by looking at the service, right? These services are going to do all the same thing. You can attempt to ping fci-solution, but there's nothing really able to respond back. It's, that port is not open, and you can confirm that here. So you can confirm that NS lookup, however, is working by doing an NS lookup. And sure enough, you are going to get responses for kube-dns and fci-solution. Now, how is that working? If you run this command against kube-system, you'll see that there are two separate pods that are handling DNS. And for more details, you can do a cat on etsy resolve, that's the dnsresolver.conf. And this is interesting here. Because if you do a, an NS lookup for just Kubernetes, look at the search. The search is what gets added if you don't give a full name. So I just typed in NS lookup on Kubernetes, not .com of any kind. And this got appended to it because this is the first entry in search. And this page here does a nice job of explaining how it works. Notice that the DNS mask handles the caching and the health Z container makes sure that it's actually running. There are actually three containers inside the DNS pod and we've covered that in a previous video. And notice too that DNS names also need domains and here's a bit more information about that. Another interesting thing you can do is to first list your pods like we did before and then open up inside that pod a single container, that's the dash C, to the cube DNS and look for its logs. That will give you output like this, where you can see that it is using the Sky DNS library and that its domain has been set to cluster.local like we've been talking about. Now, from this book, it's also worthwhile to point out that DNS is just one of the two ways to do service discovery where environment variables are the other. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you can open up a shell to one of your pods and type in set and take a look at what you get for a response. And in a larger environments, you would see something along these lines where you are seeing the service itself being registered as these environment variables. Now, you might be wondering, well, can I do an NS lookup on pod names? We saw services, but what about pods? And it turns out that if you do an exec into the pod that you are interested in and then do an NS lookup on that particular host name, because that's my pod here, that will work. But if from my pod I want to NS lookup BusyBox, you're going to see an error message. And the reason for that is explained on the Services Networking DNS Pod Service page, which says that what sort of things get DNS names, and you see every service defined in the cluster is assigned a DNS name. And we saw that it uses the DNS search list from etsy-resolve.conf in order to append the domain names to whatever you typed in first. So we saw that in an example earlier. And of course, we also saw the A records will be assigned to the service name and SRV records are available too. But 
where this gets interesting is where you get into the pods section and this is the answer to our previous question which is that the by default it will have a pod IP address syntax in this sort of domain space so what does that mean in concrete terms well you can ask for the IP address of my pod and you'll get this answer if you now do an ns lookup on the IP address and you're hoping to get a name back look at the answer you in fact get a name of the IP address and at this point that should really make sense because these pods remember are ephemeral they are coming and going very quickly and we're not interested in them staying around for a long time that is the purpose of a service so knowing the name of a pod doesn't make a lot of sense so internally from a DNS standpoint the Kubernetes system keeps track of these pods in terms of their IP address and gives them a name, a host name, that matches their IP address for their lifetime.